I, you, you're going to have to run me through. And, 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 and fans, I got a chance to talk to Robbie yesterday on the phone. And I want you to tell me this story that you told me about Michael Jordan. When you and Michael Jordan kind of came to, you know, kind of little differences about your opinion about how, how the game was played when you played with Chicago with Michael Jordan. Yeah, uh, how, how, how the, uh, if you want to call it a confrontation, came about. Uh, Phil was alternating players, you know, second team on the first team, first team on the second team. And so I started, we were scrimmaging, we played like six games of, of uh, going to five points. And so after the, the first two games, Phil put me with the second unit where, where I always play with, you know, my boys. You know, my, and then he put uh, 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 Lonely on back with the first team. Luke Lonely, that's his name. And so we proceeded to kick their butts like four straight games. <laughs> and uh, Michael took offense to it. So I asked him, how did he like that butt whooping? And no, so, no, no, no. This is a real podcast. How you like that ass whooping? That's well, what I, didn't, I didn't know whether it was a family no, 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 issue no, or no. not. This ain't family. We, we good. Yeah. But since I don't have to use a filter, I asked him, how did he like that ass whooping we just put on him? And he took offense to it because clearly no one ever, ever manned up to him and you know, challenged him. So he said that he was going to say that if, if, if I wasn't careful, he was going to kick my ass. And I told him, like, I'm not in all you. I play with some of the baddest fellas that walk in the court, and I reel off some names, you know. I'm, I'm calling you, I'm like Cedric, the Bird, McHale, Bill Walton, Tiny, and I'm going to be in awe of you. You know, he's looking at me like I had slapped his mother. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that story. Then you went even further, and I think you talked about one of the rookies came over to you and said, man, I can't believe you talked to Michael like that. Yeah, uh, uh, Derek Dickey. Couldn't believe that uh, I talked to you know Michael like that because clearly you know Michael was the alpha you know he was his team he ran he ran the ball club and everybody kind of like got out of his way and do his thing and I understand that but I like I said I'm not in awe of him I was a champion when I came there and, you know with all due respect to he and Scotty and, and Dennis Rodman you know I, I uh, you don't know my hanging from the rafters the guys like this name hanging from the rafters not to mention. I played with some Hall of Fame, Hall of Famers, and I'm going to be in awe of him. And not to mention, Cedric, let's not forget, even though he dropped 63, we stepped all in his ass, did we not? <laughs> I rest my case. <laughs> I, I, you know, I absolutely love that story because I, I, people for a while have been talking about, well, Michael Jordan was a bully. And I said, I remember when we played with the Celtics during the 80s, we didn't have nobody who was a bully. We no. were just like a, a team that, you know, if we had anything to say to each other, we said it, but there was never any confrontation. We just went on and played. Well, you, you, well, you know, for yourself, uh, Cedric, everybody got their own style and, and the way they lead. You know, Michael was in your face. He challenged his teammates. And as you know, uh, Larry was our leader, but Larry led by example. You know, he wasn't a vocal leader. You know, he let his play dictate how we should play. And I think, I think uh, Larry uh, style and philosophy makes the best leaders. Because if you are yelling a screamer, after a while your voice falls on deaf ears and the players just kind of kind of tone you out, you know, hear what you got to say. So I, I respect both uh, leadership styles, but I prefer uh, Larry style the best. Because, you know, some nights, you know, you don't want to hear what, what he got to say. You know, speaking of um, uh, Michael, he all up in your face talking trash. You know, he might get a short ride, Max. You. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to tell it like it is. Tell it like, look, I'm going to tell this, it like it is. This, this, this is what this job is about. This is, why, yeah. this is why I wanted you on my podcast, just to tell it like it is. Yeah. Now, Horace Grant did something the other day on Bet Online, and they, they were doing a segment. And they talked a little bit more about some of the things, again, about Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. And all you hear is it is seems like it's a conflict because on one hand, Horace Grant, who was there, on another hand, you were there. 
the story seems to be a little bit different than just Michael Jordan being the nice guy who just wanted to win. It seems like it was a lot about Michael for Michael's sake. Oh, well, you, you, you know, uh, uh, how the hierarchy plays, uh, Max. You know, the, the, the bigger the talent, the more tolerance you have for that talent. You know, uh, that old saying, we all we all treated the same, but we treated differently. <laughs> you know that that saying. Your <laughs> fish, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So uh, uh, Michael uh, definitely could could uh, wear on you because he has such a strong personality, very vocal. You know, uh, almost to the point of com- being confrontational because he get right up in your personal space, talking trash. I tell you what, I'm glad I wasn't a teammate. <laughs> I would have made the ground rule from the start. And if he did it again, I'm going to punch him. <laughs> you know, that's one thing I always like about us, you know, the, the Celtics, is we respected one another. You know, we talk a lot of trash every day, you know, about each other. But it's always that respect. We not I can't think of one one teammate that did not respect one another. We always respected one another. And I think that's where Michael crossed the line. He don't always respect his teammates, but he demand perfection. I feel like if you're gonna re- re- demand perfection, which is impossible to do, by the way, you gotta give some respect. Let your teammates know that you give a crap about them. Um, and that's something that I, I thought I always thought like he he lost sight of. Well, let me ask you this: so, what what did what did Phil Jackson do when it came to that? Tell me a little bit about Phil because I love this one story I'll tell that you told me. I love it when Phil Jackson came to you and said, "Big fella, they when you played with Chicago, he said, Big fella, we ain't gonna need you this week. Go take a vacation, stay home.' I love this story. <laughs> you know, that was yeah, so fun for me. Phil was was the best. When, when I signed uh, with, with the Bulls, I had a two-year deal. And after training camp, he told me, uh, Robert, uh, I want you to know you're not going to play a lot. There's going to be weeks, sometimes maybe a month before you play. The only thing I asked of you is that you keep yourself in, in top physical condition. And and uh, that's the least I could do, said. Stay in shape, didn't have to play. So that was a, a great way to finish up. But but uh, getting getting back to to answer uh, your your question, uh, Phil, <clears throat> uh, like most coaches, left the locker room alone. He let the players figure out uh, the hierarchy, how the how the locker room was going to be governed. And uh, I think in in Michael case, there was a mistake because he just took it and ran with it. Because he bullied all uh, those guys. And, and, and you know what said what what bothered me about that? They didn't have the balls to say nothing about it, the teammates. Man, said there's no way we do we'd have took that from Larry. There ain't no way, Max. Come on now, you know it's true. There ain't no way we would have tolerated that behavior from Larry. And he was our leader. No way we would have tolerated that. that. You know what I mean? I, this, this old saying I have, and I know I can say this because you said this is not a family show. It bothers me, man, you know, the ass kissers. That bothers me. Only time you should kiss some butt, Cedric, is doing sex. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, Cedric. <laughs> you, you know.